Hi Norman, welcome to Amsterdam. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, Norman, you were the director of the World Bank's report called the World Development Report, Risk and Opportunity. Perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit about that report and what it aims to achieve. Yes, of course. The first thing to know is that the World Development Report is the flagship publication of the World Bank. Its intended audience is uh, the, the community of development practitioners, mostly policy makers in developing countries, but, but also <coughs> private sector uh, people, uh, civil society organizations, and even academics. And uh, this year, the World Development Report focused on uh, risk management. Oh, okay. and it, and what aspects of risk management are particularly the difference? Well, it's uh, risk management as an overall approach to achieve the goals of the World Bank, which are reducing poverty and boosting share prosperity. So we argue in the report that risk management can be a very powerful tool for, uh, for development. It can save lives, it can avert crisis, and it can unleash opportunities, especially for the poor. And at what level in the country do you see its risk management taking effect? Is it at the policy level? Is it at the operational level? Is it both of those? Where, where do you see the impact coming? That's an interesting question, because we argue in the report that in order to be effective, risk management needs to be uh, a shared responsibility and shared action by both the state and the private sector. Without their joint participation, all efforts will be uh, will have shortcomings and will be ineffective. Okay, so it's really important, isn't it, to have a, a common framework to allow communication between those different participants and also to have effective communication between, say, one country and another country on these topics. Because no, no country can be looked at in, in isolation these days, can it? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of the goals of the report to provide a framework for integrated risk management. We believe that only when risk are assessed in, a, in an integrated way, in different contexts, then they can be assessed effectively. And uh, in that regard, what you pointed out is very relevant. How to allow for coordination between the private sector and the state, and also across governments. In fact, there are many risks that are global in nature, like financial crisis and climate change, and they need to be addressed by the community of countries and, and not by any, any isolation. Yeah. I mean, one of the challenges in the banking industry is, is to get consensus amongst a wide variety of different participants on, on what the answer should be. And it's almost impossible to, to reach that goal. And I'm sure you must face those same, same sorts of challenges. What, what would you think are the biggest challenges in getting, getting that agreement and that common framework to work in practice? That's a very difficult question. And we do see that, that people have different preferences and different objectives. But this is why we need a coordinating agency. In many cases, this is the government. And uh, for the financial system, the main problem that we see around the world is a propensity towards instability, especially as countries uh, deepen their financial markets and include more people in participating in those markets then they have this propensity for instability. What to do then? We uh, re recommend very strongly that uh, governments undertake macro prudential policy to address uh, global imbalances as well as domestic imbalances within the financial uh, system. And when they design their strategies for, for the development of the financial sector, that they take into account the trade-offs that might exist between inclusion and stability. Yeah. And can you can you provide a that's a, that's very clear. Norman. I mean, can, can you provide a couple of practical examples in terms of how risks have been identified and managed through this approach? Absolutely. Let me just cite the example of four countries that are very different: uh, Kenya, the Czech Republic, Peru, and Colombia. These countries suffered quite a lot in, in the 1990s from a series of financial crises. They learned the lesson. When the 2008-2009 global financial crisis started, they were affected, but they were able to recover quite, uh, quite rapidly. So they were resilient to that kind of crisis. And the reason why they, they were resilient is that they had a more prudent financial regulation and they had a, more, a stronger macroeconomic stance. They had reduced deficits, they had accumulated reserves, they were able and willing to counteract the crisis when it came. 
that's very interesting. I do a lot of work in the banking sector. And it's, it's always the banks that have had real crises, who are the best at risk management, the best at stress <laughs> testing, all the other things that you need to do to, to manage risk effectively. And I think one of the challenges then is to transfer the knowledge of that best practice to those countries that might be a bit more complacent. Absolutely. Yeah. But what is interesting now is that that transfer of knowledge and, and good implementation is now going to take place from this uh, emerging market economies, that those I cited, to uh, even developed countries that are now are facing uh, their own the crisis of their own. And the most important lesson there is to go from a system of regulation that focuses on the specific bank, which is the micro prudential yeah. regulation, towards a macro prudential regulation that is one that addresses risk at the overall system. Absolutely, and that was a theme that really came out in the, in the second day of the conference here, is that need for, for more effective macro prudential uh, inputs to, uh, to, to, to policy makers, uh, which also uh, requires a, a common risk framework, doesn't it, to agree to, to allow that to work, to work effectively. So, so for the people at this conference or looking at this, uh, this little clip, what would be key messages for people in the risk community in terms of what they could be doing or what, what they should be doing with, with this report? They will, uh, I think, appreciate the comprehensive uh, basis of the report and they will appreciate the fact that we provide an integrated framework for analysis. We do believe that risk should be addressed jointly uh, and that uh, in order to, to do this, to coordinate as well, people need to speak similar languages. Uh, so going towards a common terminology and a common framework is a contribution in that regard. And we hope that this report can, can, can be an input for that. I'm sure it will be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. A pleasure. Thank you.